Hello there guys and welcome, welcome back to the channel. Now we have more details coming out of Vancouver in regards of Necropolis. And uh, yet again, it is huge thanks to Cam. Big shout out to the guy. He's an absolutely amazing guy. And uh, now let's see what he has written here about Necropolis. So uh, he has given us his recollection of Necropolis map. Here we go. So this first post, I believe we already know. We have more information about Kushala, so we can start with that, where she supplies her own buffs like Voodoo. She's basically fire Voodoo, but cooler. Animations are out of this world, got immunities, do not know which ones. Doesn't benefit from MD traditionally, which is quite interesting, and doesn't benefit from Despair traditionally. But she still apparently has a ton of power gain and all sorts of other cool mechanics. Uh, so, uh, Kushala seems to be a very, very, very hype champion already, and I haven't heard a single bad piece of feedback about this one, so it does seem like DLL will have knocked it out in a park. I definitely can't wait to get my hands on some version of her as well, just to test her out, but she definitely, well, according to every single player that I have spoken with that had a chance to test her out, nobody has said much bad or negative. Everybody has been super impressed and, you know, so the expectations are high already. Expectations are high for Kushala being a DLL champion and all. So now we have Cam's recollection of the map itself. Each path has 14 fights. Final boss, new Grandmaster. There are four shared paths and eight unique ones. Doesn't mean we're going to have to do it eight times. I believe it's going to be eight total clears, eight times fighting the Grandmaster. Then. The unique path you take impacts the trap nodes that you'll have to face on the unique and shared paths. Quite interesting. Red circles equals trap nodes. So here we can see the layout for the most part. And it's fairly straightforward. So you can start somewhere at the beginning. You're going to move out in the end. And then I believe that every bit. So by the looks of it, the final four fights you will have to do like four times in these uh, no, tidbits at the end. And then the eight, eight fights, it will be different. No, it's D6. It looks like 12 parts there. Well, that seems to be the map. We'll see how many times we need to find the final boss. Now, we do have more information though that is a bit more detailed as well. No damage cap. No, damage cap is, I'm sorry, not no damage cap. The damage cap is definitely there, which I kind of got, had a proper swear. Because damage cap is 1.5% of the max health. So we saw champions there, and we can pull this up as well. Uh, on calculated, just so you guys see that we're not doing some sort of stupid math. We saw champions there with six and seven million health, something like that. So we take the seven million health pool and times by one point five percent, there'll be one hundred and five k. It's still abysmal. It's even worse than the abyss damage gap, I think, because. Abyss damage cap was 85k like three or four years ago when we were using rank five six stars. Or sorry, not rank five, rank four six stars and rank three six stars. And now we have seven star rank twos, which are ridiculously significantly high in damage output. But the damage cap is only increased by 20%. So for proportionally speaking, this damage cap is even harsher and worse than the abyss one because if you compare the strength stats for instance uh if you go to yeah yeah if we're now playing a seven star rank two champion and you know in your future is going to be seven star rank three champions your attack value is let's say is 5k and if we compare it to a six star rank four which i believe was pretty much the highest that we had the six star rank fours or six star rank threes, we can see that the difference there is noticeable like 30% difference or 40% difference in attack values. The damage cap increase 
is only about 15% to 20%. So this damage cap, unfortunately, will be even more limiting and punishing than Abyss 1, which really sucks. Now, the good news is that we do not have global weight. Uh, if we're honest, I would prefer removal of damage cap over the all the weight thing. But fine. It's still an improvement. We all know how annoying that weight was. Also, you can get six seconds added to the time. So new enrage time is based and determined by your challenger rating. One second per challenger rating. You can get six seconds added to the time with each striker proc. And this is also going to be quite important because not a lot of people are aware of challenger rating. And what you need to know is that seven star champions have significantly higher challenger ratings than basically anything. Seven star champions effectively skipped an entire star level in terms of challenger rating. And here you can see that uh, challenger rating is 210, for instance, for America Chavez. That's 210. So there'll be 210 seconds, which works out to what, 123 minutes and 30 seconds? In a fight plus obviously however many times you activate striker perhaps you can squeeze it to four minutes something in the fight before you effectively are told to go and f yourself so that's three minutes 30 with the rank two seven star if you're gonna pick a six star rank five it's 150 seconds which is two minutes and 30. It's going to be a massive difference in how much damage in total you're able to do because not only obviously the seven star is going to hit harder you're also going to ha get what is it 25 percent 30 something percent more time in the fight so there's going to be a massive massive difference so the seven stars are definitely going to be extremely crucial for this and then hitting max and rage doesn't seem to be out or loose, but it's probably going to... Well, hopefully, you can just carry on playing without them being on stuff. This is very important as well, because if you are realistically able to play after the max and rage, until you kind of like make some bigger mistake and opponent just gets more attack or something, then fine. If there's, again, insane power gain and, you know, unstoppable, then yeah, screw it. So, Obviously, with the limited amount of information that we have. Oh, there's one more important tidbit that I did not tell. There's one more important tidbit because there is a guillotine piece locked. Uh, there's a guillotine piece. Oh, I actually need this picture. There is a guillotine piece locked in uh, Necropolis in completion. So there's going to be one piece of 7th star guillotine uh, that is locked behind the completion of Necropolis. So if you are obviously collecting the Deathless or Undead or whatever the champions are, uh, then uh, yeah, you will at the very least have to go for a completion run. Because where the piece is, so overall, though, obviously, it's still impossible to say exactly which champions are going to be best for it, because I do believe, as they are implying, that the matchups and roster depth are more important in this piece of content, which, to be honest, I kind of like and prefer. The only problem is that they're going to be testing your matchups and roster depth with a significant highlight on seven star champions, which could be much, 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 much more problematic. So obviously, this does seem like it will be quite... Uh, cost-intensive endeavor, more than likely than not, because if each path is 14 fights, so you're going to have to do 14, you know, 6, 7 million HP fights with that enrage timer and whatnot, um, it's not going to be easy. You guys can take an average, you know, not average, but even relatively high damage output champion and bring him in against Labyrinth Legend Star-Lord, and you guys are going to see that, you know, Every single one of those fights, I think, is going to require a revive at the best of circumstance, if not two or three, uh, even if you never make a single mistake, and let alone have the you know, appropriate matchup, unless there are some sort of damage increasing improvement nodes, which I kind of doubt, but who knows from Kaban. Um, still, lots of information, obviously, and lots of details, because always remember, guys, the devil's in the details. 
because regardless of whatever we see right now, and all of it is probably true, there is still a lot of nuances. How hard the fights are, how many champions can do those fights, and uh, so on and so on so forth, and how hard the final boss is going to be, because, you know, for instance, Abyss cost is skyrocketed largely because of the final boss, especially initially. So I'm still excited. I'm still going to jump in it in day one for sure. Some things that I like, some things that I don't. Let me know how you guys are feeling about the details about Necropolis, and I'll catch you guys soon. Bye. Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. So we have all the information about